Is there any chance that technology will be removed from the game or are we gone too far? I doubt it. I do like the way that Gareth Southgate frames that particular analysis that we should just go back to a game where referees on the field make that decision and we all just accept it. The reasons why we have technology is because people flatly refuse to accept it. And the game moved to such a level because of the televisual side of things where the interrogation and subsequent vilification of referees reached such a point that there was a need to enhance the support mechanisms. Has it enhanced the support mechanism? Well, I think based upon the weekend's performances, you, you could make the argument that no, it hasn't. Of course, if you look at the outcomes, and people will, will always debate the outcomes, I think there's clear evidence that VAR has got more right than it's got wrong. It's eliminated more errors and given more goals that potentially may not have been given as a result of it. And there will be isolated instances that are the exception. And of course, this horror story on the weekend is that people refuse, people's refusal to accept that human error will always form a part of everything that involves human interaction is a ridiculous mischaracterization. The idea that the media and certain segments of the media that had no desire to have this VAR have never really changed their views. We, we know the spontaneity side of things. We know that argument. But the argument to be advanced that the only sport of significance in the world that shouldn't embrace significant technology is football is an embarrassment to the sport and shouldn't be able to find a solution that involves people looking towards improving rather than constantly criticising, constantly finding a way to diminish. Now, I know that the argument I'm making is completely disarmed by the ridiculousness of what happened last weekend. I mean, you can't price that into tech, you can't price that into refereeing. But, but, surely, but Simon, you're, you're, you're an intelligent question, man, and, and you know, yeah. and you know, and, and you've, gone through, you've gone through businesses, you've yeah. worked in different yeah. industries, you know that sometimes you make a decision with the best intentions. Once you've seen the fruits of that decision, you yeah. sometimes go, hold on a second, that didn't work. And the prudent thing for you to do, and you've done it, is you've gone, stop. Pivot. We'll go back and of do course. it a different way. But the version, but the problem is, <laughs> we've moved the argument and debate on from vilifying and condemning referees for making decisions and doing it dawn till dusk, and then changing that to now vilifying the next part of the refereeing food chain, which is the VAR booth and what's gone on there. I think we've also got a little bit uh, angry with the way the laws are written. I think that's a, well, another that's big a problem. But that's a different discussion entirely. That's but about, I think that engenders a lot of anger well, around I, what decisions it, are made. It may yeah. well be, but we do have a sense of entitlement that we have to understand every aspect of every every single thing that goes on. Sometimes in life, the authority is the authority. It's and pretty crappy if you can't understand the laws of the game, though, isn't it? If they change them so significantly, so often, well, that you can't yeah, understand the laws of the game. Pivoting, isn't, this a, isn't this about competency? So yeah, it was, is, it, it was yeah. incompetent, incompetent, wasn't it? What it they, was, what they did. This, this, so it wasn't was. necessarily. This, this about, doesn't happen every yeah. week, though. Does so it, yeah, but so we can improve this, can't we? So yeah. the language wasn't good enough. The, the, the check complete. No one knew what they were. It was complete for. Yeah. So that's a complete breakdown of communication, isn't it? So we need to improve on that. TMO does it exceptionally well. We're watching a World Cup at the weekend, some fantastic fixtures coming up. Look at the way they do that. So we need to be much more professional. So we can. We can, we're not just moaning. We 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 have every right. To, to, to want it to be improved. Every we can weekend. demand better standards, can't oh, we? Of course we can. And that's right and constructive to point towards where those the, standards can be enhanced. Like Danny Murphy was talking about the other day about the idea that the VAR should ask the referee what's the on field decision. On field decision is what? Because if he'd have asked the referee on field decision, he wouldn't have thought he was adjudicating a goal that was on side, would he? <laughs> yeah, but well, why, but in, also, in, the in rugby, that's what they do, isn't it? They say, yeah. he said, the, 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 the referee, on field referee, says, can I give this try? And the TMO will tell them yes or yeah, no. Because they communicate. But why was it, though, that the people who make these rules, why was it that they handcuff themselves to such an extent where they don't have a, an, a, a fifth interjection where they can say, for unforeseen circumstances, something's happened that we didn't expect, we can come in and stop the game. Instead, they make they a do, rule, but, but, but they that's do, they pathetic, do, they, isn't it? If you want fairness, but they, have a, they have a protocol, right? And in this instance, somebody needed because the moment if you listen to the audio, and it was evident before we heard the audio what was what had gone on, but the audio just confirmed it that there was going to be a penny drop very quickly. That actually we've just adjudicated the wrong decision. Three seconds after the restart, right. so they, they, you can hear it in the in the audio. So what it needed to be was a culture of somebody was brave enough to go ignore the protocol. 
stop the game. Well, the operator was seen to be the, uh, the best decision maker the building And the problem with that is, is that you've got to be able to have a culture in referees that A, they have enough leadership and capability to want to make those decisions, and B, they don't do it whenever they feel like Applying it. The law Sa- 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 Simon's right, though, isn't he? Because actually what that became apparent when you listened to that VAR audio was that the VAR and the AVAR were more concerned about breaking the protocol and getting in trouble for that Correct. than they were worrying about the legitimate outcome of the game. So we're losing the essence, aren't we, of, of, of sport being honest? So Howard and Webb has got to change that. I don't well, think it's, I don't think it's a lack of honesty. I think it's a no, it's culture. Honesty. I think, it's, I think they're straight jacketed by protocol. It's a pivot, isn't it? In terms of a set of rules they, they don't want to break. To I tell you what, would be they nice. They didn't create them. It's, it's yeah. created by the IFAB. The IFAB are trying to straight jacket referees into making them do certain things the VAR for every protocol. scenario. The VAR protocol. Not protocol. just the VAR protocol, yeah, well, that's but the laws of the game as well we are too prescriptive. We need to help them more, don't we? You need more instinctive referees. Well, here's one, here's, here's here's one now, because we're about to listen to Howard Webb, aren't we, on Monday. And what I would like to talk to him about is, what is this not unnatural or natural state that you're supposed to be in when we're giving handballs away? i really like to get together with the, the people that make the laws for the game. But because you... because I, if my hand is up in the air to make a block and I make the block, okay? We had one recently where Gomez makes that block. In, in the, the Luton versus in the Wolves Luton game. Luton versus Wolves game. They, and they it comes that, off his leg that, and hits his hand. Okay, But he so, went into the challenge with his arm in the air and they say that's an unnatural position. They come, How do they know? The PGMO, in order to make well, the tackle, that is a legitimate penalty. Where do you think these rules come from? You have IFAB, which has people, which had people like Marco van Basten sitting on there. And Wenger. Right? And but so I'm just, sat there. I'm so saying the rules to you, there's a grey area of what is natural and what is unnatural. Because if I naturally have to put my arm there to make the block, it's a natural position. It's subjectivity. And unfortunately, with human interaction, you're going to have subjectivity unless we want to build an AI based game where we put robots on the pitch and in, ensure that actually everything comes down to no subjectivity it comes down to the ultimate equation which is we have zero in the way of human interaction and we can have that and we can build towards that and if that's the value added that we think we're going to be able to achieve but when you're sitting there saying I wish if, I was in that conversation Simon, so, people like you, but, but you are how, in that how is it handball though if it balloons off your leg but you're having your a conversation that is not being set by people not only in this room but even in the PGMOL that's not being set by them if you look at what handball is in most of the other countries in Europe and we we'll compare it we're actually more lenient than them and you can't have one set of rules in the Premier League on a are Saturday we? and are one we? set of rules do you think on a so? did you Absolutely. not see Atletico Madrid game in midweek there was a game where I'm watching the game where there was an offside. times out of ten. How many times the ball get hits a player on the head? How hits a player the on the head and goes Spain. and hits his hand. They, they take it. the goal it's out. True. They take the goal out. We should have, when it deflects off one part of your body to the other. Why are we different to UEFA? We should have the That's same rule. Why? Tell me why then. Why can't we? Because have, that, and, and align that, our and games that's, and our that's rules. the problem. Because we're trying to be a little bit less prescriptive than the actual rules that have been written. So the people that are writing the rules are David Ellery are Pierre Luigi Colina and they want prescriptive rules if it touches your hand that's it it's a penalty it, it, there was a penalty in the Europa League last year uh, when Manchester United they lost at home against I think it was Real Sociedad so, they lost to 1-0 okay. and it was so a you penalty want it which came off you another, want it subjective, another yeah? part of the body you want it subjective you want it subjective and do you? do you want it subjective? I want more instinctive common sense in refereeing so what about yes. the one in the, in the Arsenal derby game when the ball hits the defender's hand? it's a penalty of course it's a penalty, but you've got most of the world saying it isn't. Why are they saying that? We're losing track of what's handball and what isn't. If you're in the six-yard area and the ball hits you on the hand, I'm sorry, it's a penalty. Especially if it's going in the goal. Yeah. And I could not unbelie- believe the argument. I think we're getting clouded by too many views from other people and they're losing the, the plot. We're getting cloud- clouded because they keep changing the wording of the law. And they're, well, making, they're scrambling people's brains. I think there's an issue with the natural and unnatural position. Do I think, don't think referees do think understand that. that VAR well has created this necessity to pivot the rules to meet VAR rather than the rules. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's what's um, happening. Being fit I think for they've, purpose ri- they've for written VAR that for that. Yeah, shape they, it. They, they, because you can shape because, it so because you can look moved, at it with more Because everything has changed, intent. isn't it? Once upon a time, what we used to see on a football pitch was mistakes being made and decisions being given and the naked eye being trusted. And then along came Sky with all the wonderful bells and whistles of what has created football in this country and the scrutiny in the 360 degree, seven days a week, 24 hour access brought a new requirement of referees. And now in order to combat that because of the nature of what was happening in the game, which was the cons- cons- consistent deriding of officialdom and managers and players moving into a territory it was getting out of control about what they thought referees should and shouldn't be able to do we moved into a VAR territory and that VAR territory has created another conundrum and the, we, it's lovely and we started this conversation with the trite glib comment from the England manager which is can't we go back to a day when people accepted but nobody did Nobody accepted it. Now, 
we can turn around and say, or oh, the guy in the pub, but we're not talking about the guy in the pub. We're talking about the people in the game. 20 Premier League managers asked for VAR to be introduced. Well, there you are. And and, and this week we've had the auto, uh, the ability to be able to have semi-automated offsides introduced into the potential discussion and the Premier League clubs potentially voted against it. And possibly one of the clubs that's been the most vociferous about the outcomes this week, and rightly so, Liverpool, were probably one of the football clubs that voted against. Not that it would have made any difference in this instance because they weren't considering an offside, an onside or, or an offside, or more to the point, offside decision. The reason why they one. did that, though, uh, the semi automatic Things because they thought there was new technology which coming down the line that is going to be more advanced than what they've already got. So they're waiting instead well, of installing well all that money but on but that. We, but we have, have to, to wait. Accept. I think I think Howard Webb finds himself in a difficult situation with lots of new people with VAR coming in, with lots of young referees. I always say on the in the moment the referee please get it right because then it saves a lot of this trouble. But, this, but there's also there's also another agenda here, and I and I really do believe this. And people are going to think about the idea that there's a sort of Kaiser Solzheim moment. It was it was a, it was brought forward by what. Pep Guardiola talked about, which is the arrogance and, and needing for officials to be humble. The officials are now, and it doesn't help when Darren England makes these awful mistakes, the officials are trying to wrestle back control over who runs the game. There is a, a real upsizing in leadership requirements game. from Howard Webb. There is a real necessity to be able to stop the instances that happened last year with Bruno Fernandes. With and correctly Andy so. Roberts, and correctly so. So what I knew was coming. I knew it was coming. The football world would weaponise back and go, Hang on a second, referees getting arrogant because okay. they don't want that. They want a different parameter. They want we'll to continue that in just a second. Time, We've really? got to go to a break. We'll come back and do exactly this and we'll let Martin have his say. If you are going to say something as a pundit, you have to do it from a position of knowing the laws of the game. You can't now just come out with, oh, well, you know, if I'm a football person, that's not uh, that's not handball. Because that's you can't judge a referee on what you think yeah, a decision right. should be. You have to judge a referee on the job that they're doing as in applying the laws of the game. Under the yeah, but it's interpretation, isn't it, of that law and applying the law in the correct manner. And we're sometimes seeing, OK, so last week, um, Anthony Gordon, he uses his hand, doesn't he, to keep the ball in play and then crosses it. You remember if they've got one of their goals they yes. scored? Yeah? Yes. And the, and the VAR just ignores it, OK? So I can see that and I know that if you can't... What's the it, law say on handball? Well, the law for that situation saying if the ball if it plays a part in the goal being got, directly goes no in the build up there's an interpretation no. it's an interpretation it's but I think that the hand no, he's it, used it, his it, hand it there to keep the, the ball law in play. two years ago am I right on this Joe Joe is our referee he w referees in the Sunday you league said you should know you should have to ask I somebody do know. else uh, and that's why I'm saying you're it. just telling the, the pundits they should know and you don't know I do know he's going to tell go him. on and tell us because he's told you in your ear go on no, he, he hasn't, he hasn't he spoken hasn't, a word in my well, ear well go on then tell but, me then uh, it's, it's if if the ball is controlled by the hand deliberately or accidentally doesn't matter in the uh, immediate build up to a goal in the in the immediate, so no, it's not in the bit up to the goal. It's the immediate action before a goal. Is that right? This was though. It is. That wasn't. He was. He crossed Did he score it. it? He, he got Did the he assist. Score it? No. It has to be the player who no, scored but, it. No, but that's where it has I think. To the, be the but goal I scorer. think that's where the law is an ass. Oh, but that's because, a different that's conversation. What we're saying. That's no, 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 the law. no. Yeah, but in previously, obviously, it may, have, it may have changed. No, you just, you just, you've just actually underscored my point. But just a minute. Which is, you have to. If you're going to speak about it, you've got to speak about it from a position. Okay then. Okay then. But the week before, we saw Berger, didn't we? from Sheffield United, use his arm, yeah, when he crosses the ball against Forrest and the goal struck, it didn't count. So why is that different then? Because, Tell me why that's different. Because there was, uh, because that, I think that is because... Know your stuff. He You're can, doing enough games, you should know it. I, I, well, you just Berger, Nottingham Forrest. <laughs> yeah. Why, didn't, why did the referee because not give it? Why did the referee say no? Because the referee deemed it, after a review, as a deliberate handball. And you don't think it was then with, 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 with Gordon? You don't think Gordon's... Used his hand deliberately to keep that ball well, in I'm play not the for the referee. cross. I don't have to make that decision. But this is the problem. It's well, no, the And problem we can is, comment. We, can, we, be, it? we are law. more than happy to, to comment. That's on the law. It. Yeah, but. You're judging referees. You've got to know the, the conversation law. starts yeah, if by it's, pundits not being. Not no, no, no. But Simon, properly. they're very similar situations. Both of them were assists. Both of them were crosses. They scored very good goals from. And in the build up to the goal, the immediate person who assists it handles the ball. And it's different interpretation. What are we to say on that? We have some consistency. But there, has, but there has to be an element of subjectivity in there and an educated awareness, doesn't if it? If it takes the, if it so, hits so, the hand, it shouldn't, it shouldn't But that's it shouldn't be not allowed. the law. So the that's law is the law. if it's want, a deliberate handball, if it's deliberate, so VAR, it's handball. So VAR if it's were not wrong, deliberate, it has to be the so goal scorer. So goal should never have, should have been allowed. If it's not deliberate handball. Did you think it was deliberate? They I thought it was deliberate. I, I didn't think it was actually. Well, no. but the, the referee and I the thought VAR it was did. very unfortunate, and everybody feel. on the night said the but same thing. That's what you feel. It's, it's, so you're subjective on that. It's not wrong under the laws of the game. But is what it? we've got, though, can you see the argument we're having here? The, exactly. The, the similarities between these two instances is unreal. But at the same time, we've got two very different outcomes. So but actually, that's not what should be happening? We've had we've had a big argument about this. Mm -hmm. But does it underscore 
how difficult it is for the officials. Yes, and that's the centre part of the argument that we started with, which is pundits judging people by a set of standards that they don't even understand themselves. No, no, no. So that's the no, point no. that we're making. Let's stick let's, 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 to they, the incidents. You, you don't understand rules. So, you don't understand so rules. Go- Gordon has actually he's actually Gordon's alive. Yeah, he has actually used his hand there. Of course he's on the you, he's on the football we, pitch. Everything's the deliberate, isn't it? Would you like to read it? Well you can read it if you want. I'm giving it to you. Well, you, no, you, you read it out. What, you want me to present, you want me to present now? <laughs> Listen, point three under handling the ball. Repent, not um, present. It, <laughs> for purposes of determining handball offences, the upper boundary of the arm is in line with the uh, bottom of the armpit. Not every touch of a player's hand or arm with the ball is an offence. It is an offence though if a, and there's other things here, but this is the key one, if a player scores in an opponent's goal directly from their hand or arm, even if accidental, including by the goalkeeper, immediately after the ball has touched their hand or arm, even if accidental. Yes. So it says in law that Anthony Gordon, unless it's a deliberate handball... I think it was. ...should not be given as a handball. I don't think you can... And the dis- VAR will not I don't un- think you can it. separate Berger's handball with, with, with the other handball. You can't... They're both exactly the same. Gordon's exactly the same. Well, that's a Berger. matter of interpretation. It's not it, a matter of yes, law. Yes, it is a matter of interpretation. So maybe the people in VAR are getting that wrong. And maybe the people who are in VAR don't apply the law correctly. And maybe that's where we are, we are now that he has a group of people, Howard Webb, that are not fit for purpose, and he's de- trying to deal with it. He's trying to, he's got a, he's trying to groom and, and develop new referees, and he's got people at VAR. It's a technical issue. How you, we've seen it all there at the weekend. It's glaringly obvious that people in the VAR are not fit for purpose. You can't go from a referee in a football pitch and then come into a room like that and be techie. The guy, the operator, actually, is the one who's talking the most sense, and he's the one who's saying we should stop the game. The guys who are referees sitting in there aren't. It's a Making bit of the a right calls. Yeah, you're it's what there. I saw at the weekend. It's what think, I saw at the weekend. Do, do you think a VAR's job is a, a referee's job, or actually, if could I'm be in the a... VAR, if I'm sitting there in that VAR with both of those inches, I'm saying, do you know what? I think really they're both handball because they, it hit his arm and it's affected the outcome of that goal. So I think we should cancel it out. But that's it's not the same person doing it, is it? Different people have different viewpoints. And I wonder whether or not actually the, the, uh, the solution to this problem is, is you reduce the pool of people by saying that there is a group a de- of on field yeah. referees. Well, I think that's over- and there's a team of VAR. I, I, think, I, think, I think that's absolutely right. When you speak to one of, again, the infamous interview that Mike Dean did with me that got him into a set of problems was his specific I couldn't do VAR. It wasn't for me. It didn't chime with what my understanding of how I would referee a game would go I didn't work with it so I think it's evident and I think that's what they're moving towards aren't they they're moving towards a specialist function dedicated specifically and explicitly to be VR based and so with that in mind you're going to have dedicated professionals and then what people will say and they've said it before yeah, we're moving towards you it. lose there yet, well because you have to build up the resource he, he's you. only been in since Come December on, should give, he have done it, it by give now? it a little bit of last year no, 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 no I agree with that but then what I, happens I said he inherited the issue but then yeah. what happens is is that the argument is that once you get away from the pitch and you don't see it in its entirety and you're not feeling it this is what Dean was saying you lose the reality of what you're adjudicating because you're no longer in the zone of seeing it in your mind's eye and, giving and a, looking at it digitally. And giving away a, a bit of a you're trade secret here, argument. you and I have both done commentaries live from matches around the world mm-hmm. and we've also done, I imagine you've done it as well, I haven't done it with you yet, but uh, do, you've done commentaries in what is described as an off tube booth where you commentate from Correct. a series of television screens. Quite removed. And, and it, the, the difference is huge, isn't it, in Massive. terms of the feel and touch for the game. So I imagine it's a similar for a, a, a referee going to a VAR booth. Yes, but then they need to be... It seems as if they, they're just disengaged, weren't they? They've got to focus... And they've got to. There's like, no explanation. We it's had inexplicable. A, we, we had what Darren England did. No, that's, is that's inexplicable. Yeah, absolutely. There's absolutely. no. There's no explanation. And should they be no traveling? No, should no, they no be no traveling halfway defending. around the world just a few days before as well? Well, that. Okay, I know that's been loaded in the gun and fired at them as well. If we're going to say player. We're talking about well-being I, of players, aren't we? That, what we're doing I mean, with referees. Ultimately, I'm not sure. I mean, that that will be used again, weaponized, and perhaps it's not the ideal look. I get tired of optics being the only reason we judge people by. There is. Listen, there is no excuse. There is if, no excuse. If, if I'm watching, but if we're if we're in the booth this weekend and we're watching that game, like it, it all happens again, we we know, don't we, what they're checking for? Because we've been watching the it's game. It's incomprehensible. We? I mean, no one, no, but I don't think the PGMAL can find an explanation for what Darren England has done. Right? And the only way, and when you look at it, you go, how does that situation? How can you prevent a situation like that? And no one would have said, well, what do we do in that situation? Because no one is ever going to do that. Now they've done it. They'll put a, they'll put a position in there which changes the dynamic of it, so it never happened again. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.